Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamu alaikum students So this is the session about effects of poles and zeros on time response The references for this uh, document are The Control System 6th edition book by Norman S. Nice with your textbook The objective is to evaluate the effect of pole and zero locations on the time response of first and second order systems and the required software packages are MATLAB, Simulink and the control system toolbox. So basically what we need to learn in these lab sessions are that what are the effects of adding a pole to a system and effects of adding a zero to a system. But this is something that's a way step forward. What we need to learn now is that what are the effects of changing the locations of current pole to a system and effects of changing the location of current zero, the zero which is existing to a system. So how would we do that and what are the effects of these changes on different parameters of the systems. We'll learn these things in MATLAB and we'll use the Simulink LTI viewer that would be taught in just a while. So what are the tasks? The task number one says set up a given transfer function a over s plus a and the values of a are 1, 2, 3 and 4. So you need to plot the step response for each of the four transfer functions on a single graph by using Simulink LTI viewer and what you need to have over here is that you need to plot four different systems 1 over s plus 1, 2 over s plus 2, 3 over s plus 3 and 4 over s plus 4 in Simulink LTI viewer and then you need to record the values of settling time and rise time for each of these step responses. How would you do that? I would uh, make you learn different methods to plot these in Simulink LTI viewer in just a while. So first we can go through the tasks. The task number 2 says that you have to set up the system given below which is this one b over s plus sk plus as plus b where the value of b is given as 25 and a is 24 you need you know that the standard transfer function sec, standard second order transfer function is omega n square divided by s square plus 2 zeta omega and s plus omega n square so in these systems you know second order systems that you have overshoot but in the first order systems you know that you don't have overshoot so here we just record setting time and rise time and not the values of overshoot because in first order systems we don't have overshoot now you need to set up three systems first is the original system with a is equal to 4 and b is equal to 25 the second one is the one with imaginary part of the poles same but a different real part and which is two times the original real part so you'll extract the poles from here and then you will extract out the roots of these poles uh, basically roots of these this equation over here are basically the poles so when once you have extracted out the poles you need to keep the imaginary part same but increase the real part two times and make a different a new transfer function and in the third ta third section of this task you need to make a transfer function with the same imaginary part of folds that's been given over here but a different real part which is half of the real part which is in the original transfer function I'll give you an example so you just don't need to worry you'll have three transfer functions and you need to plot them using the Simulink LTI viewer and you need to record the values of percentage, overshoot, settling time, peak time and rise time for each of these step responses. The task number three is that using Simulink you need to set up the system again the same A is equal to 4, B is equal to 25 but what are the different systems over here? A and B so that the real part of the poles remains the same okay so we have a same real part over here this time but imaginary part is increased two times 
and A and B so that the real part of the pole remains the same but imaginary part is increased four times. So something you might have noticed in the first, in the second task, in the, in the third task that in this task uh, the imaginary part is being the same but the real part is being increased two times. So you can see that the poles would be moving in a horizontal direction because we have the real axis, the x-axis and the imaginary axis, the y-axis. So we are moving the poles in the right and in the left direction horizontally because we are increasing and decreasing the real part only. And over here we are moving the poles vertically because we are having the same real part as of that original one but the imaginary part is being increased and again increased four times so it's being increased and so it's moving in the vertical direction. You'll have two different new transfer functions over here and two different new transfer functions over here and you need to compare the values of overshoot, settling time, peak time and rise time for each of them in here and for each of them over here. And basically the main motive of this lab is that you need to perform an analysis that what happens when you change these values and what are the effects of these changings on the overshoot, settling time, peak time and rise time. These questions most of the times appear in your exams, in your theory and in your and they will also appear in your lab that what happens uh, when you change or increase the real part of poles or what happens if you move the poles vertically up. What are the results, what are the effects on rise time, overshoot, settling time, peak time. So you need to do this analysis in detail. The task number four says that you need to set up this system B over S square plus A S plus B with A is equal to 4 and B is equal to 25. But what are the different systems over here? It says that you need to make a second system with A and B so that the damping ratio remains the same but the natural frequency is increased two times. So you need to know first that what is the damping ratio and what's the natural frequency. I've already told you that the standard second order transfer function is B over S square plus, sorry, omega n square over S square plus 2 zeta omega n S plus omega n square. So, zeta that is basically making A, A is equal to 2 zeta omega n over here. So, zeta is the damping ratio and B is equal to omega n square, omega n is the natural frequency. Okay. So it says that damping ratio should remain the same but the natural frequency should be increased two times. So we'll have a new transfer function with different A and different B because changing B would also change A because B is equal to omega n square and A is equal to 2 zeta omega n. A is also comprised of omega n. So changing omega n would result and keeping the damping ratio same would change A too. And then you make a th need to make a third transfer function with A and B so that the damping ratio remains the same but the natural frequency is increased four times. So these three transfer functions would be plotted using the Simulink LTI viewer and you need to plot the step response for each of these tra three transfer functions and you need to record the values of percentage overshoot, second time, peak time and rise time for each of these step responses. You just need to make a comprehensive report this time that would be comprised of analysis that uh, would be based on the results that you get from these changings. Now we'll move towards uh, learning the Simulink LTI viewer. So here I have MATLAB and I've implemented a Simulink model for you guys so that it becomes easy for you to understand and it's not time taking. So here's, I'll just remove it out here so that I can make you learn from the beginning. So here's a step input being fed through a summing junction because this is in feedback to a transfer function which is 1 over s plus 1 and the result is being uh, shown at the scope. What we need to do now is I'll right click on this input wire and select it as open loop input and then I'll right click on this output wire and select this in linear analysis point as open loop output 
so you can see an arrowhead downwards has appeared over here and an arrowhead upwards has appeared over here so this is being recognized by MATLAB now as an input and this is being recognized by MATLAB now as an output what do we need to do now is we'll click on analysis and then we'll go towards control design and just click on linear analysis you can see that linear analysis tool has appeared in front of me in front of me I'll just run this and you can see that the output is in front of me over here so what's the difference between this output and the output that will appear over here in the scope you can see there is both of them are same this one and this one okay so what's the difference if I right click over here it just gives me auto scale and axis properties but if I right click over here it gives me the characteristics option this option is really important in the terms of control systems and linear systems and especially our lab so what we need to do over here is that we need to select this rise time and you can see that a blue dot has appeared over here what does it mean if I move my cursor on this blue dot it shows me the rise time that has been uh, attained by our system which is 2.2 seconds okay so this was not an option in the simple scope now if I select the settling time you can see that it shows me the settling time 3.91 seconds and because it's a uh, uh, first order system will not have any overshoot but still we need to check it and here's the peak response I'll select this and you can see that a dot has appeared over here and I'll move my cursor to this one and it shows overshoot percentage is equal to zero so this is how you will record the values of transfer functions different transfer functions and their overshoot rise time peak time using simulink LTI viewer okay so this is uh, the method to record the values and once you have recorded the values you need to put them in a table for each task so you'll have four tables and for each of these tables you'll perform analysis you'll discuss it that what happens when you increase the real part decrease the real part of the balls increase the real part of um, uh, zeros I guess no, we don't have the real part of zeros over here and that's all that you need to do in the tasks but uh, I need to give you an example so that you guys uh, can have a leading light towards how would we perform the doubling of this procedure that the imaginary part of the poles remains the same but the real part is increased two times so I'll write an exemplary code for you we can uh, select a transfer function a is equal to df and I'll write 1 1 and in the denominator I'll write 1 2 3 okay so this is a transfer function with s plus 1 in the numerator in the poles in the zeros and sk plus 2 s plus 3 in the denominator as the poles here's the zeros here the poles so what we need to do now is that we need to extract out the roots of this denominator so I'll write roots and the denominator you can see is 1 2 and 3 and here are the roots in front of me it says minus 1 plus 1.4142 iota and minus 1 minus 1.4142 iota one way to create the new transfer function is by simply b is equal to df and here you have numerator and here you have denominator the numerator is the same one one but the denominator is now changed how it's being made by two polynomials okay uh, or sorry one polynomial and the polynomial would have two roots which are given over here sorry this is these are the roots of the original uh, transfer function the new uh, polynomial would be based on the roots that are having a double real part but the same imaginary part so I'll just paste it over here and I'll remove the space between two same uh, between the same root because it would consider it as a different root if I would not remove the space between them so now you can see that this is the first root of the original transfer function 
and this is the second root of original transfer function what we need to do is that we need to double the real part over here and double the real part over here and the imaginary part you can see is the same I'll just press enter and you can see that we have a polynomial uh, s plus 1 over s plus 4 there's something uh, wrong what's wrong uh, minus 2 plus 1.4142 iota and here's minus 2 minus 1.4142 iota it should have been a second order transfer function so I'll just check if there's some mistake okay so we need to separate out the roots again and the brackets okay so I had missed these scare brackets in the polynomial command and that's why it just summed these roots and uh, real parts and the imaginary parts and the result was a simple first order transfer function we need to mention the scare brackets as a must in the polynomial command and now you can see that the denominator of B and the denominator of A are different A is the original transfer function that I had started with its denominator was s square plus 2s plus 3 and the b has denominator s square plus 4s plus 6 so this denominator is basically having double the real part or that was in the original and the same imaginary part that was in the original the second method that you can use uh, to make the transfer function is that you can simply light poly and then in the square brackets you will just write 2 multiplied by real of these roots that we had over in the original transfer function so you can see that I have multiplied 2 with the real part and now I'll write the imaginary part as it is okay 1.4142 iota and now I'll write this thing again because one root is with negative sign and one root is with positive sign of the imaginary part so here I am doubling the real part and imaginary part is being fed as it is and here I am again doubling the real part and imaginary part is being fed as it is and here are two uh, roots so we'll just have a polynomial by clicking enter and you can see that the polynomial is 1, 4 and 6 and the polynomial that uh, we attained in this transfer function the b this method it says s square plus 4s plus 6 so there are different methods that uh, you can use you'll uh, <laughs> till the moment that these are correct and you will have the same answers if you are using the correct methods you can just choose whatever or whichever you find easy you can see the same polynomial 146 and the same polynomial 146 you need to make out these uh, transfer functions by yourself for these different four tasks and you need to plot them using the simulink LTI viewer and then you need to record the overshoot rise time settling time values and make a comprehensive report this time including all the analysis and discussion part with the tables four tables and you'll write that what happens when you increase the value of real part for the poles or decrease the value of real part or increase the value of imaginary part or decrease the value of imaginary part that's all that you needed to learn in this lab session uh, still if you find any confusion I'll remove in it in the session inshallah or you can mention your questions or problems in the comments section and I'll reply uh, them and try to solve them as soon as possible so take good care of yourselves and submit the reports in time take care Allah Hafiz